The year is drawing to a close. Uncertainty about the future makes fear a predator, and entire nations its vulnerable prey. Anger rages. Hunger is an ever-present enemy. God's people are crying out for divine intervention. Listen, angels are about to sing. Common laborers are about to rejoice. Rulers are going to bow down. A promise is about to be fulfilled. A king is coming. This is the world seen on the eve of Bethlehem and the eve of 2021. Not much is different, yet everything has changed. Those that listen will hear. Those that look will see. Those that seek will find. A promise is about to be fulfilled. A king is coming. Tonight we travel a road that leads us to the greatest gift ever offered to humanity. Like the ancient people of faith, we anticipate this gift, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. We first travel to Jerusalem and meet Simeon walking to the temple. He is an elderly, righteous, and devout man who is eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. Simeon's days are spent reading and reflecting on Old Testament teachings, longingly expecting their fulfillment. He has been promised by the Holy Spirit he will not die until he has seen the Messiah. As we enter the temple, Anna, the aged prophetess, is there as she always is. Anna was widowed after only seven years of marriage. She has no children. She has spent night and day of the last 84 years fasting and praying in the temple, awaiting the fulfillment of the prophecies. Both Simeon and Anna have devoted their lives to the preparation of the coming of Christ. We would be wise to do the same. We leave Jerusalem and travel to the small hill town of Nazareth in Galilee, where we see Mary, a young teenager, outside of her home. Mary's family is very poor, although she is related to the traditional priest families of Israel through her cousin Elizabeth. She loves God and devoutly practices her Jewish faith. Mary is engaged to Joseph, a local carpenter. However, today her seemingly normal life is about to change. Suddenly, the archangel Gabriel appears before her. His very presence frightens her, but he assures her as he speaks. You are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Mary is confused by the angel's words and wonders what they mean. Then the angel tells Mary, Don't be afraid. God is pleased with you, and you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will make him king, as his ancestor David was. He will rule the people of Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. But Mary doesn't understand and asks, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel answers, The Holy Spirit will come down to you, and God's power will come over you. Your child will be called the Holy Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth is also going to have a son, even though she is old. No one thought she could ever have a baby, but in three months she will have a son, because nothing is impossible for God. Mary replies, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen as you have said. Despite the difficult decision to be faithful to God's plan for her life, Mary chooses to obey. We too have to make those decisions. May we find the strength to follow his leading. We now journey to the hill country of Judea to the home of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. This couple was elderly and had no children. But six months ago, while the priest Zechariah was burning incense in the temple, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and told him that God had chosen him and Elizabeth to bear a son who would be the forerunner to the promised Messiah. They were to name him John, and he would be filled with the Holy Spirit and dedicated to the Lord's service, even before birth. But Zechariah doubted the angel's words, and he reminded Gabriel that he and his wife were old. Because of his lack of faith, Zechariah was struck mute and would not be able to speak until his son was born. Elizabeth did become pregnant, but she stayed in seclusion for the first five months. 
It was at this time that the angel has appeared to Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of Jesus and that Elizabeth too was pregnant. Mary leaves her home in Nazareth and journeys to see Elizabeth. We encounter Mary as she arrives at Zechariah and Elizabeth's home and greets them. When Elizabeth hears her greeting, she feels her baby leap in her womb and she is filled with the Holy Spirit. She exclaims to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary responds, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary remains with Elizabeth for three months and then returns to her home in Nazareth. We travel back to Nazareth and find ourselves in the carpenter shop of Joseph, the fiancé of Mary. Joseph has been struggling with so many emotions and decisions. Mary has returned from her cousin Elizabeth's home and told him that she is pregnant, that the Holy Spirit filled her, and the child is the Son of God. He loves Mary and knows that she is a good woman with a fine reputation, but he finds her story difficult to understand, much less believe. Because he does not want to see her harmed, adultery and engagement was punishable by death in some cases. He decides to divorce her in private. This needed only two witnesses rather than going through the Jewish courts, and no formal grounds needed to be given for the divorce. He is exhausted and finally falls asleep. The angel Gabriel visits Joseph in her dream. Gabriel speaks, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awakens, he knows that Mary is carrying his nation's long-awaited Messiah. He will bring her to his home and await the birth of the child. We leave Nazareth and go to Rome, where Caesar Augustus lives and rules as the first emperor in the ancient Roman Empire. He meets with his Roman soldiers and issues an order that a census be taken of the entire Roman world. For those families in Palestine, they have to register in their historical tribal town rather than where they live. This means that Joseph and his pregnant wife Mary have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem, as this is the town from which Joseph's family, the royal family of David, originally lived. It is a journey of about 70 miles. Little did Caesar realize that in his decree, he was helping to fulfill Micah's prophecy. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. We are now in Bethlehem, a town bustling with people. Obeying the decree of Caesar Augustus, Joseph and Mary left Nazareth three days ago to journey to Bethlehem. They have arrived this evening to a village overflowing with weary travelers. Mary is exhausted, and Joseph is desperately trying to find a place for them to stay for the night. They stop and speak with an innkeeper, who has no room inside, but is kind enough to offer them all he has a place in the stable with the animals. Knowing that Mary is close to delivering, Joseph accepts the innkeeper's gesture of hospitality. Under a clear sky full of sparkling stars, the couple moves to a shelter amongst God's creatures. This is not how Joseph or Mary imagined that the Christ child would be born, but they followed God's lead, for his ways are not our ways. 
Just outside Bethlehem, in the fields, we find a group of shepherds watching over their flock of sheep and lambs under the brilliant starry night sky. Suddenly, they are startled by an angel surrounded by bright lights. They huddle in fear, but the angel says to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly the sky fills with angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. As quickly as they came, the angels leave them and disappear into heaven. The shepherds decide right then that they will follow God's plan, and they gather their belongings and leave for Bethlehem. We now journey to a country east of Israel where we find Magi studying the stars. These wealthy men are greatly respected within their own society, as well as by those who lived in neighboring countries. They spend their lives analyzing the skies and religiously following the patterns of the stars. Tonight, they will see a new star in the sky. They hold to the ancient belief that signs in the heavens portended great or terrible things to come, depending on who is interpreting the sign. A stellar event of such magnitude was often thought to herald the birth of a king or someone of great personage. Such an event occurred in the sky this evening, and the Magi make plans to follow the guidance of the star. They will leave the comforts of their opulent homes, gather their servants, and pack gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These royal seekers will set off on an arduous journey to worship a king. We, like the Magi, have followed the star. And now we approach the stable where God chose for his son to be born. We join the shepherds who left their flocks in the fields to find this tiny king that was heralded by the angels. We see a man who lovingly cradles this baby in his arms, and a mother who, although exhausted from a three-day journey and the pains of childbirth, looks adoringly at her beautiful baby boy. But most of all, we focus on the baby. This infant. God in human flesh has descended upon mankind and by his very presence transformed darkness into light. That light shines like a beacon across time to light the way for all of us who walk in darkness. That light leads us to a rugged cross where this perfect Son of God was nailed and crucified. That light burst forth from a tomb and illuminates our way to eternal life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. We must follow. Hallelujah! The light shines! It has been our privilege to share this time with you. It is our prayer on this last Sunday of Advent, 2020, that you may know the greatest gift ever given, our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. May you find in Him the hope, peace, joy, and love that only He brings.